Oh, we're recording. Hi, welcome back. To oh, it's on the side, huh? Hi. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> welcome back to my channel. I am recording on Sean's phone because he's being generous and letting me use his technology today. We're going to talk about, we just did a video on Sean's channel about um, the connection between the trans community and the drag community. Or the non-connection, but people think there is. The misconceptions <laughs> and just stuff. We did kind of ramble a little bit. Yeah. But I think, I think we talked about some interesting stuff. Your audience and my audience may not know. I just got back from doing a youth summit. The burrito was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I'm in drag today. And it's kind of like we're both off today until later on. It was his idea to do a video about his um, topic. And I was like, well, we kept going into things about us, us, uh, us two. That I was like, well, might as well make a whole other video about that. Because it's a whole other discussion. And, but basically, we're going to talk about us as a couple. Um, because... I didn't sign up for this. I'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean is a trans man. I'm Who told you? <laughs> out of you, everybody. I am a cis male drag queen <laughs> who is gay. And I guess we could talk about how we even like first started talking. Um, yeah, we can do that. Well, quickly. For starters, I used to go to the local drag show, um, which he performed at and host. I was there every week, literally every week. I was there as a fan. Watching the drag show, and um, that's how I got exposed to this. <laughs> I remember seeing him as a photographer, like on like wet dream machines, or like that. I didn't know who he was, but I remember seeing him. And and what? I think I met you because Miss Charm, my friend Miss Charm. Oh yeah, so I met Miss Charm first. Yeah. And we we were like friends, and then you guys were friends, and you guys were hanging out a lot. I thought the chicken was lovely. <laughs> um, my friend Miss Charm is. Uh, really good friends with a lot of staff at Paradise, which is the bar that we perform at. Now I am too. I work there. I love Paradise. Um, I think I met you on your birthday. Like, officially met you. Cause I don't... Like, we hung out yeah, socially. Yeah, for some mm -hmm. reason, okay, for me, I don't know where I got this idea from, but for Sean, being a trans man who seemed very, like... Straight. Mask, straight, yeah, very that. I mean, like, I manifested this idea that, like, straight guys don't like being around gay shit even though you were in a gay bar but i was just like i just had that imprint in my mind <laughs> that like straight guys don't want to be around that and they don't like that kind of girly stuff especially like if you're a trans man like you try to avoid being with the hey girl what did it you know like the, yeah. the kiki and all that so i think i just manifested the idea that he didn't like drag queens and i was wrong <laughs> and i met him on his birthday officially we uh shared a cupcake and then he shared his mentos with me <laughs> and Ms. Was well it was supposed to be me miss charm and him having a cupcake but miss charm dropped her cupcake on the floor <laughs> frosting side down that's when we first met and then we i think i added him on facebook and he didn't know who i was no okay so that's like a funny so i only <laughs> i only seen this person in drag Never ever outside of drag. So I had to ask my friend Richard when we were hanging out all the time. I was like, who the hell is this? Who's adding me? I never seen this for a day in my life. He was like, that's Katana Ray, stupid ass. And I was like, no, it ain't. I ain't never seen this move before. They ain't never been at this bar. No, Why we got so many mutual friends? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had to. He, my friend had to tell me it was. It was. And then we we started hanging out like on Monday nights and stuff like that. We would hang out, and I'd be in drag, and we just we just because you'd always be there at Charm. Yeah, so we all would hang out. Or, or for gay people, at least it's like there's like this kind of like thing where like if you know someone straight or out of your league or something like that, you can like openly flirt with them, and it's like not really as awkward because you're like it's oh. like never yeah because that's never gonna happen. So that's why a lot of people are so like playfully flirty with some people because it'll never happen. And I think a lot of, I had that experience with like you and Charm and a couple of other people where like, I was a couple Tyra. of my lesbian friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> <thanks. laughs> I was like flirty and whatever and I, I never liked that anything because. It's so funny that it kind of came around full circle. because Because I was like at the bar and I was sitting next to someone. I was like, Sean's straight, huh? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, hmm. And I guess I was like, I have a crush on Sean. I guess I just said it. Oh my god! And so that was funny because I got that I got that info real quick because okay, News so I used fast, to I used apparently. to I used to tell my friends Rizzo's PG um, that I had um, a crush on Katana Ray, but I was like it like more of like an infatuation, like 
the as as a performer and everything like that like my favorite right always and then like they took it as like another level in their heads and then so when that happened they're like oh my god i gotta tell you what what happened what we found out and i was just like okay you guys are it's like you're making a big deal really out of nothing Wait, when didn't Charles call like baby daddy or whatever? yeah yeah and then you started and i was like uh, i was like uh, sean is, is katana's straight boyfriend as like as in katana not robert but Oh, Sean's Katana's boyfriend. And um, there's even a post on Facebook I drunkenly put. I was like, at Sean seriously is my straight boyfriend. Unofficial LOL. straight boyfriend. LOL, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> any, you're like anytime, boo. Or, or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, we obviously exchanged Snapchats. And we probably did the whole like, oh, what's your code or whatever. And um, but he used to work overnight shifts at his work. And so like. I'd always be up late anyway, because uh, I had a lot of time yeah. doing nothing, because I didn't really work as much, and then basically slid into the DMs a little bit. Well, like, okay, so this is what happened. <laughs> I was at work, I get a Snapchat, and like I never really get direct Snapchats like that, and he Snapchatted me, and it was at the bar, they were at the bar, and it was late night, and they were closing up, and it was just our group of friends that are always there, closing up. Was that when Fred was still working And there? you and Snapchatted Fred and Charm and everybody, and you're like... Oh, um, where's my eye candy candy or something? (laughs) And then, like, I read that and I'm like at work and I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) I was like, what's going on? And, and, like, so I just, we then from then on, we were like chatting every day, chatting on Snapchat. Like, yeah, we weren't texting, we were chatting on on Snapchat first for like up until like I was done working. And then we talked, I think like a week later, we talked like on actual text message, which then, was the same thing. I think it's because after a while, we were like, I can't remember what we talked about because it was on Snapchat. I hate, I hate Snapchat. Right? <laughs> sometimes if you miss it, you won't remember what you're talking about. Yeah. And so we finally were like, exchange numbers, I think. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I think on my Snapchat, I still have your number saved on my messages. Like when you can save something to a call. Oh, I still, uh-huh. don't have this number. I was like, is this your number? <laughs> <laughs> From like two, three years ago? Because <laughs> I don't really use Snapchat that much. And then we hung out like at the bar after we've kind of established the mutual connection already. And then we went to IHOP. <laughs> we went to IHOP with Charm. Was that Charm Bay? Yeah. And then when we were like at the table, at the, at the booth, underneath the booth, <laughs> we held hands. <laughs> and we, held, we held hands. Degrassi moment. <laughs> and then like... No one knew what was happening, no. and it was like that was like the metaphor for our relationship with the first like week or so. That no one, it, we were like we were right here in front of everybody, but we literally didn't, no one knew that like down here we're like this. <laughs> On the way home, we I sat in the back seat with you, and we held we held hands as we dropped you off. Yeah, and didn't I take you home? The though, other time after before af- that, yeah, another time. No, but after that, because that's when we probably kissed the first time. I doubt it. I don't. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm pretty sure we did, and. Um, <laughs> We started dating the weekend before Valentine's Day, right after Valentine's Day, the seventeenth. So it'd be, well, it was like President's Day or something. Well, we were like dating, but we didn't make it official. Our, I know, one of our first dates was to see Deadpool one, and that came out Valentine's Day weekend. So we saw it like the following Monday or something. That established our relationship, and then uh, I basically almost lived here, basically in this house for like a good year because I work. I lived way across town. He lived here at North Side. And, um, so driving me back, cause I don't drive cause I'm a scrub and driving me back to at home all the way, like at like late, like after like midnight, it was kind of tedious. I almost and, died. I'm just kidding. And, um, <laughs> I started sleeping over and then I just started sleeping over like, more often and I would just get up, go to work and then come back home, go to work. And it became a thing. And it just kind of, I kind of somehow moved in here kind of, without <laughs> having anything here, I just kind of started living here. And now it's been almost four years yeah three four years in february yeah Ooh, I'm crazy. Just kidding. uh that's basically like our cliff notes of our, our relationship so when we first started dating and that became a thing it's it's always like well i think even now when people, when people meet us and know who we are and they just they meet our other half it's like there's always kind of a little bit of confusion and if it's not there it's like implied the biggest thing i think for us was like so sean's gay yeah. And then you'd be like, no, I'm the gay one. He's not. But I don't think Sean's gay. And like, I don't think him being with me makes him gay or, or whatever. And, and I know that he doesn't like me only because I'm Katana. Because that'd be a little, that'd be different. That'd be a different story. No. Because <laughs> um, whenever we hung out, I was not really in drag. I was always a boy. So it's always like a question of us when, we, when we're together. It's like, how does it work? Mm. And it's like, how does what work? Go into that no, oh, I, was like... I mean, it's like it's, it's funny because it kind of brings up a lot of like people's views on what relationships are and gay relationships, straight relationships, things like that. So it's like, I mean, for me in the drag community, 
there's lots of like drag queens that date other drag performers, trans people. As cool as our relationship is, like we're not that unique. I just think that we're just more open because I'm a host. Vocal yeah, like because you work at the bar, I work at the bar. We're kind of both like in the public. Yeah. Sense. I mean, like even like drag, like uh, Bijou and Liz, they're a drag couple and they're yeah. both cis men, but they do drag together. So for me, like I always feel like I don't know if I could ever date a drag queen because I'm just too selfish. <laughs> And it's not about them being a drag queen. It's yeah, just about no, me I being like, I don't want to be like, I don't, I don't have like the self, the self assurance to be like, I can be with this person and not worry about being compared or whatever. whatever. Cause like at the time, oh, okay, back you. in the old days, like Manila used to, Manila was always dating Sahara Davenport and everyone would be like, well, Manila's cool, but Sahara is busted. And this person's cute. Like Alaska's busted, but Sharon's cool. Like, oh, yeah. people would always compare the two. And it's funny how things change, but you <laughs> yeah, know. I know. Huh? Not that Sharon's busted now or anything. No. But, it, that was my my mindset like four years ago. Because it's one of those things like oh you know it comes to you when you're not looking for it, and I was not looking when we talked. It wasn't even like I'm, I'm gonna turn him. That wasn't my thing. Like it's three a.m. and there's no one else to talk to, and and I respond. <laughs> and it was cool, and then it ended up being just like an all day, not just at night thing. You were feeling a type of way, and I was like, well, I obviously feel a type of way, but I just only think about it because I'm like. I didn't think it was an option, so yeah. I didn't even think. Well, even dra doing drag opened my eyes up to the idea of of what sexuality is yeah and gender like when i was first getting into drag and when i was first you know 19 i was like oh this gay straight by and then there's only trans or cis after doing drag it's like no like you identify with anything you're you could be anything yeah people always get caught up with labels and i'm like well they're not only really labels they want to have a community to uh -huh. be identified with and i don't think it's wrong to want to be called gay or straight or whatever like if you want to be in that community then that should be fine. Like, I think the ideal sexuality for the world, like, in the perfect world, like, everyone should be pansexual. <laughs> yeah. You can fall in love with anybody. and Literally. Yeah, and not have it be a big deal. Because you never showed interest in men before. No, no. Um, so, a lot of times people would, like, get confused. And um, most of the time we were at the bar sitting. So, at our bar, there's a bunch of TVs. And they usually have slideshows of half-naked guys and girls. It's a gay bar. You know, mostly... Uh, it's only thing gay about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, like, a gay man will look at these models and be like, yeah, that's hot. Like, I would love to have that in bed type of situation where I'm like, no, nah, I can acknowledge that they're attractive. And, like, that would be cool if I looked like that. But I wouldn't be like, yeah, I want to go and have some <laughs> fun times <laughs> and do stuff like that. So and I don't even know what I consider myself these days. I kind of am just like, eh. I don't really think I have to identify that because I'm in a happy relationship. But... When it does come down to it, people question, they do question me. If this wasn't a relationship, I wouldn't be with a guy, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I did turn him. No, just kidding. <laughs> no. When I was single, I was gay. Like, I've always been just, I'm only, I'm only into guys and that's it. That included all people who identified as guys. Like, so it's not like, oh, like, it's not like people who are like, I like guys, but I can't date a trans guy because... To me, that's transphobic. You know, it's like, yeah. Um, I understand their intentions behind that mm -hmm. statement, but it's just like, uh, it's kind of like when people are like, I'm gay, but I can't date a black guy. It's your preference, but it's just, it shows ignorance of like, you never. Like, maybe you shouldn't you, say yeah. that and you just kind of keep it to yourself. Because it's one of those things where, like, if you go into life and you want to date and find someone and you put these things like, oh, I won't yeah. date this category of person, then it's like, with your luck, you're going to get that person. And they're going to be like the best thing to that get. Ever happened and they're going to gonna be like, no, you're five, six. Like, you know, <laughs> people are into like, oh, I can't date a short man. Like, you'd be lucky to get a short man, you know? Yeah. I was in my like single phase. I was like living my best life because I was going through a lot of stuff. And I was like, I am single and I'm just having a great old time. Like, yeah, I think I was single for like only like maybe um, like two months prior to meeting you. Gross. It's funny, I, <laughs> I, I kind of learned from us being together, like, everything I did wrong in that past relationship, so it kind of made me appreciate, it made me learn lessons. So what are you trying to say? I'm saying that I was, before I met you, I was even worse as a boyfriend. <laughs> so, any bad tendencies I have now, I've learned from you to be better. Oh, oh. how gay. Do you think that you're pan? I don't know, you know, I, you know. Your walk. <laughs> just kidding ever since like we've gotten as serious as we've gotten the only time i ever think about it is when people bring, bring it, up. it up after they ask i go home and i'm like well geez oh and then i start questioning it and thinking like well 
am I questioning it because somebody asked and I'm questioning it so that it's easier for society to understand? Or am I questioning it because, man, do I really not know and have I never really known how I identified? I'm not gay. But at the same time, I'm like, people probably think I'm just scared and I think like it's a... Uh, it's like a denial thing. Yeah. And I'm like... Ugh. It's I a, don't it's, feel like that. Like, I thought it. I drilled myself over it for sure. Don't get me it's wrong. It's like when people say like, oh, well, you're just saying you're bi because you're too scared to be gay. No, I think bisexual is a real thing. Yeah. People, I, like I said, I everything's people, a real thing. I, I, I well, I think it's also because people, I think that stems from self uh, insecurities. Because, yeah, exactly. Because for me, like I came out as bi because when I was 12, 13, it felt less controversial because I'm yeah, a girl. Yeah, for sure. Too. And then I grew up like, no, I'm gay. So I think a lot of people come out that way. And I feel like they just believe that, oh, well, since it was me this way, it's the same for everyone else. Yeah. When it's not. And it's not. I think, I mean, even though we have friends that identify as bi, I think bi is kind of old fashioned. It's like out, well, because it's like. <laughs> I don't think it's outdated. Because if people say I like girls and guys. I think it's, I think it's valid. Because if you think about it. So does I, that mean they're not attracted to people who are non-binary? Probably not. That's probably not what they want. That's what I take it as. When someone says they're bisexual, I think that like they only like male presenting guys and then female presenting yeah, women. Yeah, that's so. I mean, to each their own though. Like somebody who might identify as bi may not think that that's what it boils down to. But I... Margaret Cho says she identifies as bi, but she also is attracted to trans people. So she had to like differentiate it. Like she had to be like, I also like trans people though. So people understand that. Yeah, they, but but for me. Oh, okay, I get what you. But mean. if if you're bi, wouldn't you just like? Yes, I get you. But for me, that's why in in today's Sorry. climate, and like, <laughs> if you're gonna say I'm bi, and you say I like guys and like girls, that to me is saying, like, okay, well, I don't like, I'm not really into trans people. I'm not into people who are in between or both. I think in I I don't know. I think it's um, you're right. I think you're right. Yes. But at the same time, like I said, I think it's subjective. Like, if I were to say I was gay, my definition of gay is not your definition of gay. Well, my definition of gay is... No, like, you know what I mean? Or, like, if, if like, I have friends who are um, bisexual or whatever. I've met people who are bisexual, but they made it very apparent that like, it was more of, like, the cis... So they only like cis? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, they didn't have a problem with it. That just wasn't their sexual preference. You know, that wasn't what they wanted sexual yeah. relationship with. well it's like it's like with gay guys that i hate when people do say i'm gay so i like men when they would use that against feminine men like, oh or like people who do drag would be like oh well if i wanted a girl i would date a, i would date a girl and it would almost be like they, do, they would say it and it was like an insult almost because even before drag i was feminine i would do drag and people would not know but they'd be like oh, i'm not willing to fem dudes i'm not willing to this and i don't like drag i'm like okay and then i would like get to know them and be like i do drag and they're like oh I didn't know that drag queens look like you. You know, <laughs> no, they don't, because a lot of people don't know. I mean, this is years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, even like the past few years that we, four, almost four that we've been together, the idea of again the spectrum is so much bigger now. And uh -huh. like even like today, I was at a youth summit for kids, and like I was like, you know, I didn't think we even had a price center when I was your age, and I was only like what ten years ago. So it's like, it's crazy that yeah. how far we've come. I guess. This. I well, I feel like to get some kind of information out of this, other than just us talking about ourselves. What would you, what would, what, what, what would you do? What, remember that show? Yeah, I heck um, yeah, I that show. What would you, um, what, what are some things that you would like tip people like not to do or to do or what's not really like etiquette? The first one is how does it work? Like that's the weird thing to ask someone in any relationship. Any relationship. That's just, Because like, that's like when people are gay, like, oh, who's the guy and who's the girl? You're judging a gay relationship based on a heteronormative society. On what people consider gender norms. Yeah, it's it's actually easier because it's like <laughs> when you know, when you don't have to deal with that kind of shit. It's like there's no like role. <laughs> no, no. There's these roles. No one has like an assigned like I am the man. Or, what are you talking about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, so, like, I'm just that's, kidding. <laughs> that's, a lot of people have that. Really no, I know, I know. But I think they I would've... used to, I used to be that. I used to, I used to be that way where I was like, but that has to do with with my trans journey and what my ideal was of what an ideal man is. And what I want it to be. Want to be. As far as relationships go, I think the best thing is... Um, what was your question? I was implying, like, what are some, like, etiquette tips you can give people who are asking about, like, relationships similar to ours? Don't. I mean... I mean, I, I mean, 
yeah, the whole how does it work, I think, is the biggest thing. And, and any person, I think, would. I've even had some close friends be like, no, but for reals. And I said, no, but for reals. It's invasive. Yeah, well, I, you mean, know? I mean, that, not even like intimacy wise. It's to question how a relationship works between two people is kind of invasive. And- I think the biggest thing, though, is is when people do ask that, we uh, there's an undertone to that, that everybody knows what they're really asking. It's like when, when a trans woman. Um, has like a publicity thing to do or that she's doing like you know something for something not related to her being a trans person mm. it's always like but do you have the surgery though it's writing a book or she's doing a tv show she's like but do you have a penis right like it's like those questions that like people always are so curious like they want to know because they don't want to be baffled or something yeah. and it's... i don't know if it's because we grew up in the whole that's a man maori culture but oh like, yeah huh? but like people get like this weird satisfaction of like knowing if someone is trans and being able to call them out on being trans like i know you're not really this you know it's like weird like i, I remember like i went to denny's once with honey mahogany so it was a friday or saturday night so it was pretty busy and the first thing we walk in honey is still in drag and this person's like that's a dude oh like we didn't say two words we didn't even speak yet and yeah he's like that's a dude it's like okay and what like what did you get do you want to that? fight i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding it's like um, that's a waitress I, I think i think it's um if you're entering a new relationship and it's one that involves a trans individual um before you even decide to engulf yourself and let this person feel comfortable with you you need to make sure you're comfortable with it because if you're not then it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be a good relationship. I mean, when I first started my transitions, I've gone through two relationships that that were that weren't good. They were toxic for me because I was fighting my own battles with finding my identity and everything like that. So it just didn't work. And communication is huge. But if you're a friend of somebody in these types of relationships, just be respectful and understand that there are certain things that are inappropriate to ask at all levels if that person wants you to know they'll tell you like if you're really good friends with them and you guys talk about things on that level you'll you'll know that doesn't mean that you go tell the world and share their business but people don't realize when they're asking stuff like that they don't think it's offensive it's because we're not like the conventional couple that people think about but it's like like i said like we're not an, a unique thing like we there are yes, plenty we are. i mean in kidding. our community we are but like there's plenty of people around the country and around the world that have relationships just like ours and and some people it becomes an issue or even there are some like drag queen couples that someone in the relationship they discover that they actually are women and they want to live as a woman so that for them being cis men originally in a gay relationship that can like make or break relationships sometimes they'll just stick with it sometimes they'll separate so, well it's kind of like whenever when you meet someone who does drag and they're like, so do you want to be a woman? No. It's like, mm, no, I'm not strong yeah. enough to be a woman. It's like, I like being pretty just as much as like being handsome. See, that's another thing, though. When they ask a drag queen, do you want to be a woman? Mm-hmm. Because they're they're trying to relate it to what trans is or something is. But that that's not what that is. Implying that if I was trans, I'm not already a woman to begin with? Like, Well, no. Like, do you want to be something? It's not about what we wanted to be. It's just what we knew we were. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, uh-huh. that's what I'm saying. Like, like if I was say if I was a trans woman and I was a drag, like, do you want to be a woman? If I was trans, I'd be like, I am a woman. Yeah, yeah. I just have a lot of makeup on today. That's all. I did a little extra today. You know? Yeah, I was saying to the kids today that for me, I've always been more identified with the trans community because I felt when I was younger, like before, I think drag queens and trans people, trans people got really divided. I think um, was that we were. On the same spectrum because we like we kind of like we were lumped together in the same category as trans, whether you're a transvestite, transsexual, or transgender, or whatever. Well, I'm in the trans community because drag queen, the drag that I do, transcends gender. So it's like we're transcending. Mm. So like that was my little like twenty year old brain. <laughs> so that when people would call me like the T word, or use it, I'm like. Yeah, I'm in that. I'm in that group because yeah. I'm part of that. I can't just you know dress up as a woman, you know, perform as a woman. And then reap the benefits from all that without getting some kind of flack that trans women get every day. If they're yeah. Really you know, so I'm like, I, I'd rather be with them <clears throat> than be on the opposite side of that. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on that team. I, I don't explain it to every single person who asks me that. But if they ever go deep with me, is my like sock boot popping out? It is. It's been out this whole time. I think the honest truth about us in a relationship, and we'll, I don't think we even know how it works. It just, <laughs> it, just, it, it, be, just, it just came out of nowhere. It literally did. Like, I've never been in a long-term relationship before, and people, old gay people in general, they feel like, oh, I gotta go 
and uh, go this, and then I have to do this, and I have to find this person, and I have to do this, and like... Like they have to follow... Yeah, they, they have to follow, like... Like a checklist. Yeah. So we, again, heteronormative structure of what they want their lives to be. They want to get married, and they want to have kids, and they want to go this That was me. I mean, fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. kidding. And not every woman wants to be a mother. Not every person wants to get married, and not everyone wants to do the same thing. And it's not like we don't have issues, because we do, and it's not like we don't argue, because we do. It's like, it's also kind of hard though, I guess if you're in our situations that from all of my friends are basically cis gay men, so they don't really have experience in the same way that we do. And for him, he doesn't really have anyone who's dating a drag queen. We have a very individual relationship. Yeah, I think also what makes it different for us compared to uh, other people who might have similar relationships. As far as our community goes, we're pretty like publicly out there, especially with us both having the only gay bar in town which is where most of our social life is i well i i wasn't working there when we first got together but we were both there at least once a week every week we're still there <laughs> every week I think that is a big you part know of it. the amount of people who know us and know us separately and then very like everybody's business <laughs> i yeah. feel like because when we first came out it was like everybody was like all up in it. Yeah, they thought we were joking. Uh, I think us being kind of in a small community, because Stockton, is, we only have one gay bar in town. And the fact that I'm a host of, like, the only drag show here in town, and then our good friend is, like, one of, like, the favorite bartenders of the bar, who knows almost everybody, and then now Sean almost knows everybody. If he knows people on different days, I know people on different days. So, like, us together, like, people know both of us. Our kind of groups of friends yeah. kind of merged. Because, like, our show, luckily, the fact that our show is not crazy but it's also it's got a lot more lucrative than it used to be like a lot of the same people who come out like this past thursday all the people in the front row were the people i already knew so it's like this is no point in telling y'all guys the rules if i know every single one of like you personally <laughs> so i'm just gonna go in the show and get it started you know and it's it's cool i mean it's kind of intimidating that everyone sees us and knows us and you know what's funny to me though as much as we say that and we know that's apparent Every, there are a few people who, like, I'll run into at the bar who know us separately, but don't, they don't know us. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what the secret is. What? Get out of there. We got to get that cat out of there. Okay. Let's end this video here. Thanks for watching. You can see the uh, other half of this video. Where I me... see you looking at me. I'm going to go get you so you don't get a fish. Um. Anyway, there's a cat in our koi fish pond, so we have to go get it. Don't hurt it. Get away. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.